Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this melting cheese text effect. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is what the finished text effect will look like and I'll be showing you how to apply this to a single letter. From there you should be able to easily apply this to other letters. The first thing we need to do is create a new document 1920 by 1080 pixels and select the type tool. Type out the letter R or a letter of your choice in a thick bold font then convert it to an outline by right clicking it and going to create outlines. Make the letter quite big and centre it within the artboard using the alignment tools. When you're ready, select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle which is of equal height to your letter. And then give the rectangle the colour red. Once you've created the initial rectangle, we need to copy it multiple times. The amount of copies we need is up to you. The more copies you make, the more drips the letter will contain. The only rule you need to follow is the amount of rectangles needed must be an odd number. Hold down the ALT key, click and drag the rectangle across to make a duplicate. Then you can press CTRL D to repeat that same step. So we've got two rectangles, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lock the letter layer from within the layers window just to stop it from moving. Then select all of the rectangle layers by dragging a selection across them all. Then using the right middle anchor point, scale them until they equal the width of the letter. To make sure they're fully aligned, you can press Ctrl Y for outline mode and just to make sure that everything lines up. Select the direct selection tool and select your first rectangle. Zoom in and select the bottom two anchor points and make the bottom edge fully rounded using the corner radius handles. With the anchor point still selected, we can then move the shape up or down to determine the size of our drip. Once you're happy with the first drip shape, go ahead and select the second shape using the direct selection tool and select the top two anchor points. Then using the corner radius handles, make that top edge fully rounded. With the anchor point still selected, move this shape up or down, but don't go any lower than the first shape. You just need to repeat this along the whole letter until each rectangle has been rounded off and moved to position. There's no real rule to the height of each one of these need to be. Just make it random each time. Once all the rectangles have been rounded off and moved into position, select the rectangle tool again and drag a new rectangle around all the red shapes. Give this rectangle a different fill colour and then send it behind the red shapes using the control open square bracket shortcut. Make a selection around all the rectangles, then select the shape builder tool which is shortcut shift M. Hold down the alt key and just draw a line through the bottom portion of the shape and what this will do is it will just remove all these bottom shapes where they each one intersects so you should be left with a melting or a dripping type shape and before you deselect the shapes we need to unite them together to do this select the unite option from within the pathfinder tool if you don't see this window open if you just go to window and then click pathfinder we now need to do all this again and create another dripping or melting type shape this time keeping the drips quite small. Start off with the rectangle tool and create another rectangle or new rectangle the same width as our first one. We can use this existing dripping shape uh, as, a, as a guide and then just give that a different fill colour. Hold down the ALT key and just drag a duplicate across and then using the CTRL D shortcut we can just repeat this all the way across. And like I did with the first one, select the direct selection tool, select the bottom two anchor points and just round off this bottom edge using the corner radius handles and then we need to make these drips quite small in comparison to our existing ones and we just work our way along. Now 
let's just lock our red shape into place so we don't move it all or do anything like that select the rectangle tool again drag a rectangle around each one of the shapes give this new rectangle a different color and then using the control open square bracket shortcut just arrange that shape behind make a selection around all of the shapes shift m for the shape builder tool hold down the alt key and then just draw a line through that bottom edge and then we need to unite the shape so from within the pathfinder tool just hit the unite button to unite that into one shape if you do want to make any adjustments to each one of these shapes perhaps we want to make this one a little bit shorter if you just select all three anchor points then we can just freely move this up or down now this top edge doesn't actually follow the contours of the letter R shape so to fix that if you unlock the letter layer select the letter and the first red shape shift M on the keyboard for the shape builder tool hold down the alt key and just draw a line through the shape at the top deselect the shapes select the letter layer again and then select the blue shape shift M on the keyboard hold down the alt key and just draw a line through that top part of the shape which just removes that top bit we can now start adding some of the colors to this effect just to bring it to life a little bit so for the letter I'm going to fill this in with a gradient so I'll just set that to 90 degrees the uh, first color I'm going to use is purple and then the second color I'm going to use a, a nice vibrant pink and I think I'll move the location of the first one to about 50 percent for the red color I'm going to use a nice bright yellow and then for the blue one I'm going to just press I and color pick that same yellow and just create a lighter tone to make everything stand out a bit more what we can do is just make a selection around everything and just give it maybe a four pixel colored stroke just to make everything stand out to make the melting effect or the dripping effect a bit more cheese like what we can do is we can actually cut some holes into this so if you select the ellipse tool and just drag out a small ellipse just give that a, a solid fill then holding the alt key just duplicate this around our shape drag a duplicate to the side and just press the eye for the eyedropper tool and just color pick the bright yellow we can actually just position these at the bottom just to show that there's some bits of cheese or there's some drips dripping off and once you're happy with that select the yellow shape along with these purple shapes shift M on the keyboard for the shape builder tool hold down the alt key and just click to remove that portion of the shape or subtract that portion of the shape from this yellow shape and if you're happy with leaving it as cheese you could essentially just leave the effect like that or to make it a bit more interesting we could actually select the ellipse tool and just create some pepperoni shape so just using the ellipse tool create a big ellipse and then just duplicate a few of these smaller circles and just place them randomly once you're happy with everything just highlight all the ellipses go to object group and group them all together and we're actually just going to reduce the size of this because I don't like how big it is and then perhaps we could reduce the stroke to maybe two pixels and then if we just randomly place these and you don't have to have them all in view like this what you can actually do is just have a couple overlapping on the edges and then maybe we can just send these using the control open square brackets just send those behind so it looks like the cheese is dripping over the top of them and then these ones which are sort of overlapping over the edges if we just select the shape it's overlapping along with the pepperoni slice shift M on the keyboard and just hold down the alt key and remove that portion of the shape and we'll do the same for this one and 
and just repeat that for this last one. 